Okay, so for this chapter seven review, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yes, I can. Okay, these three problems are triangle problems. So if I look at 122a, I want to solve this for x. What do I need to use to solve that for x? Is that a special right triangle or am I going to have to use trig? Trig. It's a 42 degree angle and we can all use special right if it's a 45 or a 630, 60, 90. So we're going to have to use trig here. So we're starting at this angle. So we have 42 degrees. And according to that 42 degrees, which sides do I have? Opposite adjacent hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. And that's the adjacent. So if you remember correctly, we're going to use Sokotoa. So it's adjacent hypotenuse would be cosine. So I'm going to do cosine 42 equals x over 10. Okay, from there, how would I solve? Multi multiply both sides by 10. So x is going to equal 10 cosine 42. Got to use a calculator for that. 10 cosine 42. 7.43, I'm just gonna double check my mode. It's in degree mode, we're good. So 7, 7.43. Okay, B. Am I gonna use trig or special right triangles for B? Special right, it's a 45, 45, 90. Now this is a little tricky because when we go from here to here, we usually multiply times root two. Okay, so one way you can think about it is we usually take x, multiply it by root two to get 15. How can we solve for x then? How do I get x by itself here, guys? Divide by, Divide by root 2. I would be okay if you just left it. x equals 15 divided by root 2. You could use a calculator to get a number. You could simplify a little further with roots, but I'm just concerned about your concept there of dividing by root two. Okay, C. Ooh, C's a little tricky. Now we need to find an angle. So how do we find an angle here? So we're gonna use inverse trig. And so we always start our angle here. So we would go theta and then from theta, what side is the 10? That's the opposite. And what side is the 18? Hypotenuse. So that would be sine. So that would be sine theta equals the opposite side of 10 over 18. And when you're solving for an angle, you're going to use the inverse sign. So we're just going to do inverse sine of 10 over 18. That would equal this theta. Calculator. Inverse sine, let's see. Inverse sine 10 divided by 18. 33.75 degrees. 33.75 degrees. All right, questions on first one. Can you zoom out so we can see all of them? Sure. 
Let's see if I can make it to where you can see. Do I need to zoom in on either one of these? First one. I'll zoom in there. Does that help? Okay. Okay, on 123, we're doing a lot of exponent work. And it's double checking your ability to use exponents that have fractions and multiplying exponents. So if I look at number letter A here, what does the one half power mean? And remember in terms of roots, what the one half power means. So a one half power would be a square root. So this would be a square root of nine. That's all that means, which would be three. X squared Y. If that's a square root, what is the 27 here? The third power. What would that mean? If this means what number times itself gives you nine, what does this one mean? Wouldn't be nine, because if you take nine times one third, it would, or 27 times one third is nine, but Brenda? Three, it is three. So this means the same thing as, oops, cube root 27. It's not erasing. Which just means what number times itself three times gives you 27, which is also three. Okay. Now since we're multiplying these, we do multiply the numbers. So we would have three times three is nine. But then the exponents, we would add the exponents. So we only have this x squared right here. So I would just put x squared. But we have a y to the first power, we can assume this has a first power on it, plus y to the negative one power. So that's just y to the zero power which one of the zero power is one that just cancels out. So your final answer would be nine X squared. Make sure you show those steps on the test. You know, it, it's testing, I mean, I wanna see if you know how to do this part right here, the square root, that's half the battle. That's what I'm checking part of it. So I'll give you half credit if you can get those part, that part right. Also, if I see that you did the exponents right, that's the other half of it. Okay, now when you're raising a power up to a power like this one, now we're gonna multiply the exponents. So that would be x, and then one half times negative two is what? That's negative two times one half. Aaron? What was the negative two times one half. One. One, but it's negative one. This is negative one. What does it mean when we have a negative exponent? How do we get rid of that negative exponent? No, you won't. Well, you can make it positive, but what does that do? It, it turns it into some sort of fraction. So it would be one over x to the first, which is just one over x. So when we have negative powers, it turns it into the reciprocal. It'd be one over that num that exponent, but with a positive exponent. Okay. Um, C. C is a bit difficult now. If we can turn this into our root first, I think that's the best way to go. And that's what I want to see. So turn in your root first. And the three goes on the outside. 
of the root, the radical. So it's a cube root of 1 over 125. And then we can actually raise that up to the second power. Okay, does anybody know what number times itself three times gives you 125? Make a guess. I heard somebody say it already, I think. 11 times 11 times 11? 15 times 15 times 15? Five. Five. It'd be five times five times five. So since 125 is five times five times five, then when I take that cube root, that would just be one over five. Because one times one times one is also one, right? And then that simplifies that part. <coughs> Got to square it now. So I get 1 over 25. OK. Now on D, the first thing you can do is divide the numbers. So 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. And now, since I have a negative 2 in the bottom, here's how I look at it. I want to get rid of that and move it to the top. So when I move it to the top, it's going to become a positive 2. Again, when I move those negative exponents to the top or the bottom, that's how you make them positive or negative. So now I have x to the third times x squared, which would be x to the fifth. You add those. That's it. Okay, questions there. I think that's probably going to be the harder part of these three questions. The triangles we're okay with. But I'll probably divide it up like this, so that way if, I mean, this half is going to be worth 50 points. So divide that into three, you're looking at, you know, 16, 17 points a piece. So, you know, where, where this one is divided up into four, four points a piece, the top one's divided into three, which would be five or six points a piece. Okay, last one we're going to need to probably make a table here. Let's see if I can fit this all in the picture. Okay, let's just do this. All right, at East College, 700 or 7,776 students are in the freshman class. 6,750 are sophomores, 6,750 are juniors, the rest are seniors. About 18% of students in each class are in the performing arts. So that's important. We're talking about performing arts. So our two-way table here that I'm going to make, I'm actually going to do, let's do this, in performing arts, no performing arts. Okay, and then what would this first column be? Looking at where our numbers are. I'm actually gonna have a couple columns here. Yeah, it would be each class. So this would be Frosh. Soft. Senior. My table is novice and not long enough here. And these would be totals. 
So, and these would also be totals down here. So my freshman class has a total of seven, 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 six students. And my sophomores have 6750. My juniors also have 6750. It said that the rest are seniors. But then it says if 27,000 undergraduates at the school, which means all of them, in a college undergrad just means freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors. So that's total. What's probability of being a senior in performing arts? So the first thing I wanna do is find my total seniors. I'm just gonna start chipping away at this table. So, Let's see here, let's get my calculator out, 27,000. I think you're probably right, 27,000 minus 7776 minus 6750 minus 6750, 5724. Okay, now it says, where does it say? 18% of students in each class are in the performing arts. So I could just do 18% of each class. So what I would do here is I would just take 0.18 times 7776. So I'll round that up to 1400. 1,400 freshmen in performing arts. 0.18 times 6750, 1215. Juniors is the same number, 1215. And seniors, five, seven, two, four times 0.18. I'll just call it 1030. I won't round it up. 1030. Okay, let's see, just do some brain math here. That would be six, 376, right? Those two add to the seven, 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 six. And this one would be five there, four, that'd be a three there. Five, five, three, five. Does that work? Looks like it. Nice thing, this is the same thing here. I don't think I'd have this big of numbers on a test. I don't want to spend too much time actually doing this part. And then I'm just going to do this. You, and you can use a calculator. 5724 minus 1030, 4694. Now total it up. Oops. 1400 plus 1215 plus 1215 plus. 4860 and then 27,000. There's a lot of ways. I could have just added up that other whole row. 22,140. Now, since the 18% was in each class, it should be that 18% of 27,000 gives you that. So this should be, let's put this over a little bit. That should be 18%. Double check it. 27,000 times, good. Okay, so now we have all that stuff done. Let's actually look at our questions here. Let's see, A, 
if there are 27,000 undergraduates at the school, what's the probability of being a senior in the performing arts? Well, here is a senior in performing arts, 1030. It's talking about the whole school, so what do I divide that by? 27,000. Now, if you do your, your table incorrectly, and I see that you use the correct numbers, like from the, I mean, whatever you divide here, if your table looks like that and those numbers are wrong, if you divide those two, I'll give you credit. Because that shows me that you know it's seniors, you know, in performing arts divided by the total. So I'll still give you some credit for that. I just won't give you credit for the actual diagram as much. Okay, so 1030 divided by, if it were smaller numbers, like smaller fractions, I would just leave it, you know, as a smaller fraction. Since we have to de deal with these big numbers, I'm gonna do percentages. So that would be 3.8%, which equals 3.8%. I might just do something that has, you know, actual fractions that are a little easier to manipulate there. Okay, number, or letter B here. Is being in the performing arts independent of your class standing? So what that's asking is, are those separate? Does it affect, does being in a class affect you being in performing arts? No, it doesn't affect, so that means it is independent, right? What made you say it was independent? It didn't affect it. Right, I mean, if you think about some schools, you have to be a freshman or you have to be a senior to take a certain class, right? And there's certain classes, maybe electives that you have to take as a senior. You can't take as a freshman. You can't take, I don't think you can take a fire tech as a freshman. You can't take you medical. You can't do uh, pottery as a freshman. All right, so, so there's certain things you can't do as a freshman. But here, what's, what information in the problem is telling you that you can take it whenever you want to? I think the key here is this one right here. About 18% of students in each class are in performing arts. So since those are all the same, that percentage is the same, that means it's independent. If it was like 50% of seniors and 1% of freshmen, that would mean that it's not independent. Like it, you, you're more likely to be a senior, right? To be in performing arts, that's what the numbers would say. But since they're all the same, it means they're independent. And then C, it says, if a student is in performing arts, what's the probability that he or she's a senior? So now we're just going to look at the, if the student's in performing arts, so here's performing arts, right here, this column right here, this row, the probability that they're a senior, so what are we going to divide there for C? Yeah, the 1030 divided by the performing arts students. 4860. 21%. Oops, moved. 21%. We'd be good with that. Questions? The first three. Oh. 